I heard a horn, and then the car screeched into the parking spot that was right outside my window. I heard some footsteps in the living room and some hushed conversation between Caleb and Olivia. Mom? Mom! I heard Caleb shout from the living room. I heaved a sigh and closed the book I was reading. I set aside my reading glasses on the side table. I'm coming, Caleb! As I opened the door of my room, I saw Olivia holding Caleb's laptop bag and coat and walking to the stairs. She gave me a sly smile. Good luck. I walked to the living room. Caleb's face was red, sweat beads on his forehead dripping down the sides of his face. Mom, what is the meaning of this? He handed me his phone, which had a chat open. I was surprised at his anger. My reading glasses, I... I looked around for my grandson so he would get them from my room, but he wasn't home yet. Oh, come on. Stop acting so innocent. You sent me vile text this afternoon. I can't believe you would write this about me. Your son, Olivia, and your own grandson, Luke. What? You wish that we would all die so you could be at peace. What have we been doing to harm you? Do you really regret giving birth to me? Caleb, what are you talking about? I was dumbfounded at all the things he was saying. About the text you sent me, what else? Just as I am about to say anything further, Olivia walked in, her eyes red with tears on their edges. Oh, I thought you just sent text to me, and I had planned to just never mention it. But you sent them to your own son? She sniffles into her handkerchief. I haven't sent any text. I don't understand. Olivia takes out her phone from the pocket of her jeans, and I take it from her. I strain my eyes and read the text aloud. I hate all of you. If it was up to, I would have strangled you with my own hands. My eyes widen reading the profanities after that, and my voice turns into a meek whisper that even I can't hear. Oh, mother-in-law, I always knew you hated me, and I was learning to adjust to that. But I can't believe you sent us all this. She wipes a long, large tear from her cheek. That's it, since you can't find any peace here. Well, clearly I can't find any peace at all. The texts sent by my number and their phones were absolutely horrendous, but I am not even unaware of such language. Technology is beyond me, but I haven't ever thought of all these things. I am so confused and angry that my son would even think that I would have said any of those things. We are going to send you to an old age asylum starting tomorrow. Your father left me half of this house. Well, it doesn't matter because I'm sure the court will understand my reasons. After seeing the text you sent to your own family, you were giving death threats to your own family. I don't know anything about these texts. I never sent them. I never even thought of such things. Just then, Luke walks into the living room. Luke, can you get Grandma's phone? And then go up to your room. Stay there until we call you for dinner. Luke gives me a sad look and walks away. He comes back with my phone as he is handing them over. Caleb takes the phone from him. He then gives Luke a look who sheepishly walks away to his room upstairs. Look, he thrusts my phone in front of me to show me the chat. And sure enough, even on my phone it shows that I have sent those texts. Unbelievable! I really can't believe what I'm seeing as I glance at the messages. Huh. Olivia, give mom her dinner in her room. I don't even want to look at her, giving me all these excuses. But Caleb, okay. No need. I walk away in disappointment. I go to my room and pack my bags. It is a long time before I see the sun rays through the small window of my room and even longer before I hear movement in the house. I go out and see Caleb, sitting with a magazine on the table. 
I clear my throat to get his attention, and when he look up I say, I will expect you to have my share transferred in my account. I will find my way on my own to lead life as I have before he became old enough to drive me out. You have pushed me to become that old mother, but very well. I will have the lawyer look into it and do it at the earliest. He ignores me with my stunned expression and dives back into the magazine. I walk to my room as I hear him call out. The cab will be here in an hour. I am already ready before time with my backs. I am stifling through the family album when Olivia opens the door and walks in slowly. Oh, Mom, I wish it hadn't come to this. Stop, Olivia. I know you have no sympathy for me. Of course I do, which is why I'm having you sent away before I strangle you in my frustration. What? I am shocked at her brutal honesty. I have always known that Olivia disliked my presence. She has shown me that multiple times, but I never knew that her dislike had turned into so much hate that she was making fun of the entire situation we were in. Have you not figured it out yet? Is this not like the drama you find in the novels you keep reading? She smacks her lips at me. I decided to ignore her just to prevent further argument and continue to look at pictures of our family. She picks up one of the pictures and tears it apart slowly throwing the pictures on my face. I am too stunned to reply, but my silence does not stop her at all. I thought you had hurt me when you were in the washroom. I guess your hearing has gotten low at age. It's good, though. There will be nothing to hear at the asylum. It was really simple, though. I came in, opened your phone, and sent a text from your phone. What an ingenious idea. What? Why? Because I don't want you here. The door opened, and... Caleb stepped in. She quickly changed her expression. In this situation, only if we had been able to sort this out. I'm going to miss you, Mom. Even though you never felt it, I did treat you like my own mother. She sobbed, hugging me tightly. The cab was waiting. He was staring at us with no expression. I would have tried to explain the situation to him in hope that he would be able to believe me, but seeing his indifference to me leaving, I was disappointed. Is that how little I meant to him? I thought to myself, as I picked up my bags and walked out quietly. I thought our relationship was beyond repair. I am not of the age where I can possibly explain any of this to my son anytime soon, and if this is what he wants... I will respect his wishes and leave while I can, with my dignity intact. I asked the cab driver to drop me at the bank instead of the asylum. He begins to protest, but I tell him that I have some work there. I plan to take out the savings I have and rent myself an apartment in the countryside away from here. I call my sister, and I ask her to let me stay over for a day or two until I can make arrangements, and she happily agrees, unaware of my circumstances. It has been seven months since I left my house and came here to Primland, Virginia, but today I'm yet again leaving. Living alone for so many months has made my amnesia worse. I can no longer remember the meager daily tasks. I remember I had a son, but I no longer remember his face or even his name. A local nurse, Mindy, has offered to help me at the residential hospital facility. And since I can no longer care for myself, I've decided to take her help. It was just another day at the hospital when Mindy came to hand me my medications and told me that a young man was there and he was looking for me. Just then the door opened and a man came in hurriedly and rushed to my side. Mom, finally. I... I don't know him. I panic looking at Mindy and trying to get far from his grasp. Miss Wendy, he is your son. He had all the proof, so we let him in. He has been looking for you for two months now. You just don't remember. It's fine. 
You will get better soon. I would like to take her with me. I can take care of her at home. Perhaps living with me again will refresh her memory. I'm not going anywhere. Mother, please. It was all Olivia. She made these indifferences between us. He touched my arm slightly to persuade me. I don't understand. I made you leave our house. I am sorry. You must forgive me. I was confused, so I asked him. Why are you back now, if you made me leave the house yourself? Two months ago, on Luke's birthday, I came home early from work. I heard Olivia on the phone. She was telling her friend how she hacked into your phone and sent all those texts, and in fact, she was advising her to do the same with her mother-in-law. I was shocked, and I immediately began inquiring about you. When the asylum called us to tell us that you had never reached, Olivia had told them to never call and blocked all their numbers. I was so angry, and I believed that you were ruining the peace of our house. I was blinded, Mom. I'm sorry. He began sobbing, burying his head in the bed between my arms and kept whispering apologies. After a long pause, I finally say, Well, I will let you take me home then, if the hospital allows. I tousled his hair softly. I didn't really have any memory of the incident. Perhaps it was fortunate since I no longer remembered I didn't find it difficult to forgive him. I was just glad that my son was back even though I had no memory of how he had been a stranger in my life. The hospital discharged me immediately and while we were on the way to our house, Caleb told me all about his life. He said that he had divorced Olivia soon after and they shared custody of his son Luke. With time, I started to remember my old life. Caleb was extremely gentle with me. He took care of me and sat with me every night, telling me stories of our past life. Just being with him had helped refresh my memory to great bounds. Olivia, on the other hand, was in even more despair. She lacked experience for any job, and when she did get hired, her shrewd manners would get her kicked off very fast. When I came back, our entire town got to know everything about the matter, including her parents, who moved away to a new town, leaving her alone. She didn't have any money or resources. Thus, she faced the scrutiny of the people every day. Nobody wanted to associate with her. Even her past friends had cut ties with her, as they were afraid of losing their marriages due to her influence.